In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. My dear sisters and brothers, today we have come together to reflect upon an important theme and a title that we give to the Most Blessed Virgin Mary. This title is called Mary, Mother of the Sick. So today, as we come here in the holy presence of the Lord to seek His face and to know why Heavenly Father has given and permitted to give this term of Mary as the Mother of the Sick, let us have a small reflection. Let's first go to the Word of God, where in the Word of God we read this is Jesus Himself commissioning the Apostles. This is Matthew chapter 10 verse 8. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons, you received without payment, give without payment. Again Luke chapter 9 1 to 2. Then Jesus called the twelve together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal. And another scripture, this is Gospel of Mark chapter 16, 17 to 18, we read, And these signs will accompany those who believe. By using my name, they will cast out demons, they will speak in new tongues, they will pick up snakes in their hands, and if they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick and they will recover. That means Jesus Christ, who is the healer of our body, mind and soul, this healing power that Jesus has, he is handing over this authority to the apostles. Now we have to know then how this healing power is working on Blessed Virgin Mary. It begins in Gospel of Luke chapter 1 from 35 when angel Gabriel came upon, came to visit Blessed Virgin Mary and angel Gabriel is asking her consent whether that she is going to be conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit spirit then mother mary submitted herself saying this is gospel of luke chapter 1 from 38 that she is telling here i am here am i the servant of the lord let it be with me according to your word that means from the very beginning before the disciples became apostles before anybody has become the followers of the Son of God, Mother Mary is the first disciple, the first apostle, when she heartfully said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord, let it be with me according to your word. So, being an apostle of Jesus Christ, this commandment, this favor, this gift that Jesus has given them, that Matthew 10, 8, cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons, you receive without payment, give without payment is fully act applicable to Blessed Virgin Mary because she is the mother of God. That is why in the Gospel of John chapter 12 verse 26 we read, whoever serves me must follow me and where I am there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now, look at this word of God of Gospel of John, chapter 12, verse 26. This is actually a, a, a symbol of who is Blessed Virgin Mary and what did Abba Father established in her. Whoever serves me must follow me, Jesus said. And where I am, and that means where Jesus is, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. See, Mother Mary said through Gospel of, uh, this is Gospel of Luke, this is chapter 1, verse 38. What did she say? Mary said, here am I, the servant of the Lord. She submitted herself to be a servant of the Most High God. And she said, let it be with me 
according to your word so she is submitting herself her will her desire to serve the lord and the word of god is being fulfilled in her life john 12 26 whoever serves me must follow me so mother mary served became a servant of lord jesus and followed lord jesus not at the beginning she was the only woman who was with jesus before the birth of jesus after the birth of jesus and until his death and until his resurrection and until his ascension uh, all throughout the life of jesus if somebody who stood beside jesus even at his joy even at his sorrow even at his agony even at the foot of the cross it's only blessed virgin mary no one else that means she has really fulfilled this word of god whoever serves me that means jesus mother mary who served jesus followed jesus and where jesus is there will my servant be also there is mother mary that means according to the fulfillment of this word of god mother mary is with jesus in heaven and whoever serves me whoever serves jesus the father will honor abba father is the one honoring blessed virgin mary as we all know the greeting that uh, gabriel gave is not the greeting of that angel it was a greeting of heavenly father saying hail holy hail mary full of grace the Lord is with you. You are that grace is given by Heavenly Father. That address is given by Heavenly Father. Now, Jesus, who is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Prince of the world, the healer of the sick, who has the power to heal the body, mind and soul, has given this power of healing to his apostles, to his disciples, to to his servants to those who served him so blessed virgin mary serving jesus obtained this gift of healing now we have to go little deep into what does it exactly mean uh, the the uh, health of the sick mary health of the sick we pray in our litany the litany of loreto mary health of the sick remember us mary health of the sick pray for us St. Francis de Sales said like this, Let us run to Mary and as her little children cast ourselves into her arms with a perfect confidence. I myself have witnessed many miracles, many healings has taken place through Mother Mary, the pure, the true servant of the Heavenly Father, the true servant of Lord Jesus, the true spouse of the most holy spirit i was a missionary in kenya this was this is our retreat center called vincentian retreat center tika we have our retreats every month the first week and the third week at the entrance of our retreat center we have a marian grotto that means at the gate uh, towards the gate that means uh, the marian grotto is visible from outside so nobody can enter inside the compound actually without first greeting Mary at the grotto in our retreat center, both in Lovington in Nairobi and in Tika in Kenya. So now when we had a retreat and we have a retreat and in the retreat there are many miracles take place, many healings takes place by the mercy of God. And after every retreat, our retreats end with a rosary procession in our entire land in Tika. We have the rosary path in our retreat center. So we carry, when the priests are there, the priests carry the statue of Blessed Virgin Mary and the people follow carrying the rosary, praying the rosary in a loud voice. That's the way all our retreats end. We also have a Marian group in our retreat center. So now, after one of the retreats and after every retreat, we have testimonies. People have to testify and witness what the Lord has given, exactly what God is doing in their life. Now, uh, as in one of the retreats, and we also have uh, the registration form, we, will, we don't accommodate uh, children and those who are mentally sick, uh, those who have means, children means, those who are small little kids, because we don't have the facility to look after them so there are certain uh, certain kinds of regulations when it comes to residential retreats but ordinary one day service everybody can come so we have come to know after one of the retreats that there was a testimony and this testimony uh, was like this that after p different people are giving the testimony 
then one person came there and uh, a girl and she came to the uh, the stage to the altar actually and she has started to say this testimony saying that she is been uh, uh, been sick mentally sick she was taking medicine for depression and uh, now she is healed and she was not uh, going to the university she was just going uh, she had lost direction and she was taking medicine she was going to the she has stopped going to the university and but after she came for the retreats and she attended three four retreats now she is completely healed and she has gone back to the university she is doing well and even she said that i could perform so well in my exam i've actually two years i was out of the university and i was no even i was gone away from my home and i don't know what was happening but then i came to know i was going through depression and i was under medication and the lord healed me this was her testimony so priest and we are three priests there we were disturbed so much hearing this testimony saying somebody is mentally sick and they have been healed of mental sickness and it is you can't just say it unless the doctors testify it and it can also give some kind of uneasiness to us even the the officials of the church come to know in our retreat center even mentally sick people also been getting healed and they say what is evidence why are you because how can somebody give a testimony they are they are healed of mental sickness so i was disturbed because we have told our office staff when somebody come to register for the retreat they have to take all the details about their previous history if they have any medical condition and if they are mentally sick we don't admit them for the residential retreat because we don't know we cannot help them and we don't have the facility we don't have medical doctors to assist them so that is why we tell them now we don't have the facility we have to turn them away from the residential retreat however if they want they can come and pray personally they can also come and attend a, a one day services but not the residential retreat so i was thinking judging in my heart how can she give such a testimony saying that she's healed of mental sickness thinking this there was another person came immediately after her and she started to say i have come to give not my testimony but the testimony of my sister who has just gave a testimony just now and she started to say i want to say the one who gave testimony that she's healed of depression and mental sickness is my own sister and i want to say what she said is true because i am her sister she was just gone out of the home we were all praying we did not know where she was she we came to know she have was mentally sick she was not going to the university she had stopped her studies we took her to a mental hospital she was under medication she was taking medicine then somebody said we have retreats we can go to a retreat center we can pray and god performs miracles so we the family brought her to the retreat and this is not our first retreat we attended three four retreats and we came to know she is getting transformed little by little she made a very good confession she started to get back her mental health now we checked with the doctor they said that now she's all right then now she's had gone back to the university she's performing well and we give all glory to god that's the only time i was relieved in my heart and still i was questioning but how she could enter this place how she could attend a retreat who gave her permission the office staff nobody could notice it and then how it happened then i was just thinking like this and mother mary i told you that after every retreat we have the procession of the rosary carrying the statue of mother mary then we come back then we have the testimonies of the people attending the retreat then immediately mother mary is inspiring in my heart like this my son it is i who gave my daughter permission to attend the retreat you have kept a grotto at the entrance of your retreat center is it for me to stay there as a statue or as a real mother and i made sure that the office staff close their eyes they don't notice the the health situation of my daughter and mother mary convicted me saying in this way can a mother reject a child because the child is mentally sick physically handicapped a true mother will have more mercy more compassion to a child who is physically and mentally suffering because i am a mother 
and I feel for her and I brought her in. I made her to attend a retreat and I cleansed her soul and I healed her body, her mind and even her emotions now because she is my daughter. Sisters and brothers, that's the way I came to know the conviction that that prayer of the Memorare Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, who fly to your protection, implored your intercession, was never left unaided. We do have a mother who is not a statue. She has life. She is real. There are many who get this tangible experience of Blessed Virgin Mary because she is a real mother. Let me go a little deep to the theme, the title, Mary, the health of the sick. See, and this title, there is a, a, a big, a powerful order where I did my studies in the Angelicum University. This is the University of the Dominican Fathers. One of the powerful doctor that the, the priest called Father Reginald Lagrange, he has made a powerful writing on Blessed Virgin Mary in his book called The Mother of the Savior. And in this book, he is explaining why Mother Mary is called to be, known to be, a, the mother of the health of the sick. Mary, the health of the sick. He is explaining Mary is health of the sick by many providential and miraculous cures which have been obtained through her intercession in Christian sanctuaries up to our own days. So many have these cures been that it may be said that Mary is a fathomless ocean of miraculous healing. But, however, it is to help the infirmity of the soul that she cures the body. See, her intention as the mother of the Lord, though she heals us physically, her intention is the salvation of our soul that our heart turned to her son, Jesus Christ. And her most important cures are those of the four spiritual wounds. When we call Mother Mary as the health of the sick, according to the church traditionally, that it is about the healing of spiritual wounds, which have suffered as a result of original sin and our personal sins. And these wounds are known as concupiscence, of weakness, of ignorance, and of malice. These four spiritual wounds are called concupiscence, weakness, ignorance, and malice. Now the first one, she heals concupiscence. That is a wound of our sensibility. By diminishing the order of our passions and by breaking our sinful habits, she helps the sinner to begin to will what is right with a sufficient firmness to enable him to reject evil desires as well as the appeal of honors and riches. In this way, she cures the concupiscence of flesh and that of the eyes. See, I do remember a, a, a person came to me that this is a young man. This was in our retreat center, Thabo Divine Retreat Center in Mumbai. An young man, he came and he told me, Father, I have this uh, habitual sexual sin. I hate it and I don't like it. But I again fall back into the same sin of masturbation and I hate it. Even I feel so ashamed. I feel I am defiled. I feel I can't even pray. I am ugly. I, I hate it. But Father, again and again, I fall back into it. Then I just asked him as an, as an young priest, I was just an young priest, so many questions that, do you go for regular confession? He said, of course. I asked him, do you attend Mass as soon as possible, as often as possible? He said, yes, I also attend Mass as possible. Then I asked him, do you attend retreat? He said, Father, I also attend retreat. And he told me, he added to me saying, Father, when I am in this retreat center, attending retreat, I'm all right. But when I go out, I cannot control my eyes. And I again fall back into the same sin. And I feel ashamed of myself. And I don't know how to overcome it. Then I asked him, do you pray the Holy Rosary? He said, Father, no, I'm not so regular. I'm not frequent. And I gave him this beautiful picture of Blessed Virgin Mary, which you can see on the screen as you can see me. These beautiful eyes of Blessed Virgin Mary, this is Our Lady of Fatima. I told him to look into her beautiful face, beautiful eyes. 
and once you are being grabbed by the love of this blessed virgin mary you will never be attacked by this spirit of this is called concupiscence this spirit of sensuality of the eyes and again i explained to him this is prophet isaiah this is chapter 33 15 to 16 the advantage of focusing on god this is isaiah 33 15 and 16 the word of god goes like this those who walk righteously and speak uprightly who despise the gain of oppression who wave away a bribe instead of accepting it who stop their ears from hearing of bloodshed and shut their eyes from looking on evil and shut their eyes from looking on evil they will live on the heights their refuge will be the fortresses of rocks their food will be supplied and their water assured we explained to him when you shut your eyes from seeing what is evil we live in a world where every kind of sin is there that means as we know spiritual people say the most committed sin in this world is the sin of lust because lust is all around because this is the world this is the the century of the social media everything that is filthy is available on fingertips everything filthy is available just on the tab just on the mobile phone just on the tv wherever we look it's all around how can you guard yourself from this we told him this young man catch take up the rosary Pray the Holy Rosary. It's a weapon that will protect you because who is Mother Mary? She is the mother most pure, mother most chaste, mother the most holy virgin, mother undefiled, mother who is chaste, mother who is pure, mother who is, who is uh, holy. So this mother who is already holy, who is pure, who is a virgin can guard you from this. And we explained to him to pray this rosary every day and as you claim this word of god as you claim the rosary because the rosary is the repetition of the word of god where you say hail mary full of grace is luke 128 blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb luke 148 holy mary mother of god this is luke 143 so we just repeat the word of god uh, and when you repeat this word of God, that is when you pray, when you repeat rosary, Blessed Virgin Mary will hold on to you. She herself will protect you. And then you will be overcoming this sin of falling into the sin of sexual bad habit. And eventually she started, he started praying. And later on he said, Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother Most Pure, protected him from this repeated sin. And later on he joined the seminary. It was years back it happened. It's Blessed Virgin Mary who cleansed his body, who helped him to overcome the sin of concupiscence. So when we say that Blessed Virgin Mary is the mother of the health of the sick, the first healing she gives is a healing of concupiscence. So those who do not pray rosary, one day Mother Mary clearly told me, all those who are struggling with sexual sins, just ask them a question, do you pray holy rosary? Because it's Mother Mary who is the most chaste virgin who can enable us impart that gift of sanctity into our soul. And that will enable us to hold on to holiness. Then the second area the wound that mother mary heals is that of weakness she heals the wound of weakness our feeble pursuit of the good our spiritual sloth it is the spiritual laziness she makes the will constant and firm in its practice of virtue and helps it to despise the attractions of this world by throwing itself into the arms of god she strengthens those who falter and lifts up those who have fallen she is the mother who helps those who are weak there are people who say father i'm weak i fall back into that same sin i do, i cannot have that self-control i cannot help myself i feel i'm so weak and it is in this weakness she is a mother of the sick she is the health of the sick she will give health in your body she will give he will strengthen you in this weakness because she is a mother she was 
fully human if jesus was fully god and fully human mother mary is just like you and me she knows that weakness that you have she will help you when you seek her help and the third area where she is the health of the sick is the area of ignorance she heals the wound of weakness our feeble uh, by lighting up she heals the wound of ignorance by lighting up the darkness of our minds and providing us with the means to escape from error she calls to our minds the simple and profound truths of the heavenly father thereby lifting our minds up to god actually saint albert the great to whom she gave the light to persevere in his vocation and to see through the wiles of satan said frequently that she pers she preserves us from losing rightness and firmness of judgment that she helps us not to grow weary in the pursuit of truth and that she leads us eventually to a relish of the things of god he himself speaks of her in the saint albert of the great he speaks that mother mary helps her to understand god in a better way because she was with god she is with god and she is the bearer of god she is the bearer of god that is why you will be overcoming the spirit of ignorance see now we live in a world that people are so ignorant of god they don't know that god can forgive they don't know god is merciful they don't know that god can call take them back again nobody is so lost saint maria faustina kowalska wrote in her diary about her profound relationship with blessed virgin mary it is through her relationship blessed virgin mary she came to know that there is no one who is excluded from the mercy of god even a most grave wicked sinner this is the the knowledge that she received through her intimate relationship blessed virgin mary so she removes that spirit of darkness that spirit of ignorance as she is being called the health of the sick and again when mother mary is called as means she is the health of the sick where she heals us finally of the wounds of malice the 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 sin the spirit of malice by urging our wills god words it will go that he will she will help us uh, to overcome the spirit of the sin of malice by making us god centered sometimes by gentle advice sometimes by stern reproaches her sweetness checks anger her humility lowers pride and restrains the temptations of the evil one in a word she heals us of the wounds which we bear as a result of original sin and which our personal sin has made all the more dangerous sometimes this healing power of hers works in a miraculous manner by producing its effects instantaneously an example is the conversion of so many saints many after going to medjugorje they have received the health of the sick they received the health from the sicknesses they feel especially in these four areas especially that of we have told you concupiscence weakness ignorance and malice i met a gentleman called flor currins he is from uh, ireland but she is in he is at present in england he was helping our sender in darlington he told me his conversion experience he got in medjugorje when he went after more than 32 years he could make a confession in tears and he is actually more than 58 years old and he said long time he was far away from god but when he visited medjugorje he started to pray before blessed virgin mary actually he got that gift of conversion and he received healing if you look at this actually mary the health of the sick if we look and the interpretation the holy catholic church gives is basically not just the healing of our body it's a healing of our soul it's a healing of our emotion and our mind it's healing from concupiscence weakness ignorance and malice and this is the most important healing and as i was listening to florcurins i came to know actually the gift he received in medjugorje is 
the healing of concupiscence, weakness, ignorance and malice and he became a powerful instrument in the service of God and he even started preaching the word of God and sharing the goodness of our Lord. Again, uh, health of body, yes, Mary wants us to have that. As her divine son gave health of body, but most of all, she wants for us health of the soul. That is salvation. She who cooperated in the redemption wants to see us healed of the disease of our soul. And this is what even the saints do. There is a beautiful Irish proverb. There is an Irish proverb. It goes like this. It's a prayer to Blessed Virgin Mary. O Lady. Physician of the most miserable diseases, behold the many ulcers of my soul. See, they pray, O Blessed Virgin Mary, you are a physician, you are a doctor of the most miserable diseases. Please heal the ulcers of my soul. That's why St. Simon Stock called Mary as medicine of sinners. Even St. Ephraim called her robust health for those who have recourse to her. Robust health for those who have recourse to her. Even in the Holy Scripture that we look at this word of God. This is from the book of Sirach. It's an important scripture when somebody is sick what they have to do. This is Sirach chapter 38 verses 9 and 10. Sirach chapter 32 9 9 up to 11, let me go through this word. The word of God says, My child, when you are ill, do not delay, but pray to the Lord and he will heal you. Up your faults and direct your hands rightly and cleanse your heart from all evil. Offer a sweet smelling sacrifice and a memorial portion of choice floor and pour oil on your offering as much as you can afford the scripture says offer a sweet smelling sacrifice when you are sick my child Sirach 38 from 9 my child when you are sick do not delay so when you are sick what you have to do don't run to the hospital immediately the first thing is to cleanse your heart that means you need spiritual healing you need the healing of your soul you need to make a confession then what is to be done offer a sweet smelling sacrifice for me i will interpret it as take up your rosary and start praying to your mother who is recourse to the sick who is a help helper of the sick and she is going to assist you offer a sweet smelling sacrifice I myself have witnessed even sweet fragrance when we pray Holy Rosary. Even there are people who say that they can feel the presence of Blessed Virgin Mary because she is not a statue, she is real. And those who have real true devotion to Blessed Virgin Mary, like uh, Saint Louis de Montfort wrote, true devotion to Blessed Virgin Mary that gave a conversion effect to John Paul II, the, the, the Saint Pope John Paul II. And they all witness to the to the real existence of blessed virgin mary it is approved and appreciated by heavenly father we read how this fragrance can be interpreted the word of god says whereby we know in the word of god we can find prefigurations we can find god's prophecies we can find personal applications and in the book of Sirach, chapter 24 from 13, we read like this. It's, we can interpret it into the life of Blessed Virgin Mary. It goes like this, though it is interpreted into the form of wisdom. Because Mother Mary is the spouse of the Holy Spirit, whatever is there in the Holy Spirit can be in a way interpreted and attributed to Blessed Virgin Mary. And it goes like this. I grew tall like a cedar in Lebanon. Sirach. 24 from 13. I grew tall like a cedar in Lebanon and like a cypress on the heights of Hermon. I grew tall like a palm tree in Engedi and like rose bushes in Jericho, like a fair olive tree in the field and like a plain tree beside water I grew tall. Like cassia and the camel's thorn I gave forth perfume and like choice mirror I spread my fragrance like 
galbanum unica and state unlike the order of incense in the tent like a terebinth i spread out my branches and my branches are glorious and graceful like the wine i bud forth delights and my blossoms become glorious and abundant fruit come to me you who desire me and eat your fill of my fruits for the memory of me is sweeter than honey and the possession of me is sweeter than the honeycomb those who eat of me will hunger for more and those who drink of me will thirst for more whoever obeys me will not be put to shame and those who walk with me will not sin if you look at this word of god is an invitation mother mary is doing take up your rosary and pray i will stay with you i will pray with you i will pray for you your weaknesses are hidden in the goodness and in the grace of blessed virgin mary and when you pray with someone who is most influential with god that prayer goes forth and she brings forth to you health in your body mind and soul especially from these four areas that uh, uh, lagrange the priest the dominican father is explaining it's basically the healing from those areas of concupiscence weakness ignorance and maris and once again concupiscence means that sinful effect that came to us through original sin the sin of the flesh the desire of the flesh mother mary helps you to overcome it and the weakness were that you feel that it is you feel weak that you feel lazy you feel you cannot just cultivate virtues in yourself it is impossible without help without strength and mother mary will help you in your weakness and the area of ignorance and devil comes to us in the form of ignorance he just uh, hides the divine truths the divine revelation the, the, the divine insights that is awaiting us in heaven blessed virgin mary told saint bernadette as she was a little girl appearing to her my daughter you will not have any glory on earth but i will glorify you in heaven see when people came to lourdes to see saint bernadette she hid herself inside a, a cloistered convent when people came and asked her why do you hide yourself we want to see you we want to ask you about blessed virgin mary how did she appear to you how she looks like saint bernadette told them humbly me i am just a broom my duty is to clean the floor and hide myself behind the door i am no one is blessed virgin mary who is helping you not me i'm just a weak instrument i'm a broom she called herself a broom why she got that grace from mary who put herself she said i am a lovely servant of god and that is what mother mary is giving into your soul that profound knowledge of heaven that profound knowledge of eternal life and mother mary will remove that spirit of ignorance that spirit of darkness and she puts light about god and divine things and you will overcome that spirit of ignorance then malice were in this malice that the devil just put you evil things inside you that like that of anger pride jealousy lust laziness greed gluttony she will let you overcome the malice of these seven cardinal sins as she has been attributed and called the health of the sick let's pray for this grace let's ask her in the session this is a beautiful prayer we pray pray for us o holy mother of god that we may be made worthy of the promises of christ she is just helps us assists us she is not god but she is the mother of god she is a true disciple she is a true apostle that is why she has taken part in that ministry of healing in that ministry of conversion in that ministry of anointing so we ask her pray for us so that the promises the lord has made her son has made may come true in our life let us pray hail mary full of grace the lord is with you blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb jesus holy mary mother of god pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death amen and may god bless you all in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen
I beg you, please keep me also in your prayer. If you can pray three Hail Marys for me, I'll be very grateful. Thank you so much.